Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, welcome to the age of stagflation. I'm Travis Spencer and I'm gonna be your host. Today, we're gonna to look at recession and the increased interest rates that are causing it. Unfortunately, the Federal Reserve is late to the party. They should have taken these measures back in 2021 but they didn't. So now what we have here is stagflation. And I believe this month in July, the Federal Reserve will have no choice but to confirm recession despite low unemployment. Now, I hope that's going to happen this month. I believe it's going to be best if that happens. And you guys, here's the thing. If I'm right, we're in a much better situation than we could be. If I'm wrong about my estimates and projection and projections, we're actually in a much worse situation. And it's really hard to see light at the end of the tunnel because we need a healthy reset. We need a healthy recession to conquer the stagflation and runaway inflation, whichever you would prefer. But regardless, we're going to jump into an article from Zillow that's titled Mortgage Rates Drop as Investors Eye Potential Reset. Recession. And after I'm done reading this article, because it's very short, I'm going to pull up the Fred economic chart that is going to show interest rates because I want to go over the interest rates. I did not include it in my last Thursday housing market update because I did not have time. And then we're going to look at the 10 year and the two year treasuries to get an idea of what's happening. And is it spelling out recession? Will interest rates go up in the future? So all in all, y'all, that is what I'm providing today. I hope it's a tremendous amount of value. Remember, I am not a financial advisor. My bio is husband, father, renter, investor, and someone that made mistakes in 2008 and over purchased, which led to foreclosure. Not only did that mess up my credit for seven to 10 years, I was also issued a deficiency notice to the IRS for $180,000. So you're surprised I'm ringing the alarm. I really hope I'm ringing the alarm loud enough. I'm giving you guys enough data for you to adjust your life accordingly to become a winner in the upcoming housing market. So if you guys can, please like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And for the love of all that's holy, comment below. You guys move me. I do videos based on the comments. So thank you. Now let's get started on this right now. So this is the entire article from Zillow, y'all. We're going to read this right now and then we're going to get started on some other data. Mortgage rates declined for the second week in a row. Investors are pricing in more risk of economic slowdown and a potential recession, which may slow the pace of future interest rate hikes at the Federal Reserve. Economic indicator released last week pointed to slower growth in consumer spending and manufacturing in the first quarter and prior month with results below market expectation. This furthered the recession risk being priced in markets. Equity markets declined and bond markets rallied, driving the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield below 3%. And that's why predominantly that you saw the rates go down on average last for the first time since early June. Lower rates have not led to an uptick in mortgage activity. However, as the Mortgage Bankers Association reported, mortgage applications were down last week. Purchase activity is slowing down and shoppers contend with both skate home inventory and affordability challenges from rising interest rates and home prices. Investors will be focused on the Federal Open Market Committee minutes and speakers for any further hints on Fed actions to tame inflation along with jobs and unemployment data released later in the week. So that information actually already came out and they were wrong. The information actually beat or matched expectations which is going to put additional pressure on the Federal Reserve to continue their tightening measures. If they think, if the, if the Federal Reserve thinks, number one, that we still have runaway inflation, so we still don't have the CPI, but the CPI will come out shortly. Number two, if the Federal Reserve thinks that we have a super strong economy, then they're going to take stronger actions, which means once that CPI number comes out, now that they think the economy is still firing on all cylinders, if that CPI is higher than our last CPI, mark my words, the Federal Reserve is going to tighten even stronger in our housing market and demand will continue to get crushed. And it's going to increase the risk of a stronger, deeper 
recession. Because again, like I'm saying, they were late to the party. It should have happened in 2021. Now, we actually want a recession. We want it now. We don't want a major recession. We want a recession enough to curve demand even more, to calm inflation. So the longer that demand is crippled and the more that demand is crippled, that's going to continue to put pressure on value and prices of homes. So the longer this continues, you guys, the better it's going to be for people like me that are renting, that are sitting on the sideline. But what I want to do right now is let's take a look at interest rates and let's talk about why they're doing what they're doing. Take a look at the Fred economic graph right now. Okay, so here's the Fred economic data, 30-year fixed rate mortgage average in the United States. Now, as you can see, it went down over, it went down week over week by 40 basis points. But really what I want to cover is, is the peak was at 5.81, right? So the peak being at 5.81%, it's astonishing that just at 5.8%, the market has already started to buckle right? Now also look at this whiplash. I mean, this whiplashing is absolutely crazy. And what this shows me is the, you know, the Federal Reserve acted too quickly here. Now that the information has come out that has actually beat market expectations, I think we're going to have another increase of interest rates. And my guess is, and I want you guys to, you know, hold me accountable. I think we're going to be at about 5.5% average by Thursday. I really wish I started tracking all this because I'm very fascinated, you know, if I can hit the targets. But the fact of the matter is, is, you know, the rates went down like this because predominantly the 10 year went down under 3%. You guys saw me post that in my community tab. The thing is, is the 10 year is now back over 3%. It actually went down. It's going up and down, but its trajectory is headed over 3% again. And that's why I think next week you're going to see this go up. I was surprised this went down. But again, what that tells me as well is the Federal Reserve wants to stop. The Federal Reserve wants to reverse course as soon as possible, okay? And that's why, and listen to me very carefully, that's why I'm saying it is possible that our buying opportunity is a small window because the moment the Federal Reserve feels like they're in good enough shape to reverse course, they will. And we have an election year in, in 2024, and that's why I'm saying I have so many eggs in the 2023 basket because of that very reason. Now, if I'm wrong and say housing you know, goes sideways for five years or whatever, I'm okay with that so long as values go down. I don't need immediate equity appreciation. I just don't want to be trapped in my house. Do y'all get it? Let me show you guys the treasuries right now. Okay, here's the treasury bonds right here. Now, this is as of this morning at 1031. Now, it lowered to 2.98%. It was at 303 so this is probably going to go up throughout the week, you guys. So keep an eye on that. But I also want to point out the two-year is still inverted, which means the two-year is higher than the 10-year at 3.03%. So the two-year is now inverted, but also take a look at the one-year. The one-year has now also inverted over the 10-year. Isn't that astonishing? And look at the nine-month. This is crazy. The nine-month is only six basis points. I'm sorry, seven basis points away from inversion. So in other words, I mean, you know, how are we not in a recession? Going back to how the rates affect. So what I believe is going to happen is we're going to see the 10 year go up this week because we had super strong data in the economy. And I believe the Federal Reserve is going to start tightening more. So I believe this is going to go up probably, you know, low threes going into this week. I believe that as a result of it being above 3%, you're going to see that nationwide average of interest rates actually be more around five and a half percent. Again, I have no crystal ball, but that is, you know, what I feel is going to happen. And because this housing market bubble was created so heavily by demand, these interest rate surges like this are extremely effective. They're extremely effective. We're already having month over month of double digit inventory growth. And I'm talking like 20%. So 20%, 20% in equity. And in some, and even in my local market, I have seen in certain local markets in my local market, a over a hundred percent increase in inventory in one year. Do you guys remember all the realtors that were screaming, buy now, buy now, inventory is going to get less. Home buyers are going to get higher. They're wrong. They were all wrong because now the data shows us otherwise. So if they continue to make that argument, it's just not justified unless for some reason these trends reverse, but their trends are not going to reverse.
right? Unless the Federal Reserve flip-flops, which I doubt that happens this year and probably maybe in 2023, maybe, but you know, this is what we want to happen. In other words, we want a healthy recession. So in conclusion, here's the thing. We have never experienced anything like this before, but not only have we not experienced anything like this before, I believe there's so many economists that are getting this wrong because the data the data is so tainted. The year-over-year -year data is tainted. The month-over-month -month data is tainted. They're all kind of historical ups and downs. Because of all of those reasons, people are getting it wrong. And that's why there is such a radical difference of opinion. We've not been through anything like this before. The data trends are tainted. So some people hold on to certain trends, even though it's not realistic. Now, other than that, you guys, I hope you guys got some value. Hit the link in my description. Check out this article from yourself. And other than that, if you're out there investing in real estate, I do wish you luck and I hope you win.